Okay, my name is Luis Esparza and I come from Cal San Bernardino. And my name is Lloydie Burm. I'm a first year graduate student in Cal State San Bernardino. And I'm uh, Liliana Gallegos and I'm assistant professor in the Department of Communication Studies. And we're all coming from there. It's my second year teaching. Uh, what I got out of it was pretty much that like we in our generation have a lot of work to do and there has been like a foundation laid before us and it's up to us to kind of continue constructing like a better narrative for everyone wow. controlling our stories and yeah making sure that we're all prepared for the future so then we can lay the foundation for the future generations we can't be ungrateful to those that came before us you know and that's the major issue that we have in our communities right now our people are sick they are uh, self-destructive. They want to like destroy their own lives and then they take it out on others that want to help them. And we have this issue of coloniality. That's where that comes from. And it's really affecting their lives and it's affecting our society as a whole. So the hierarchical thinking, uh, the expectations of you know who you should be, what you should do, what makes you a cool person or a bad person, you know, like those things are killing our children, they're sending our, our men to jail, um, and also, you know, it, it's creating more racism, more sexism, you know, and there's a lot of confusion when it comes to ooh, what's feminism and what's uh, uh, liberation, what is emancipation, you know, there's a different terms for things for a reason, right, so we talk about the Americas being liberated, and they were never liberated. Here we have a government, a, a form system that comes from Europe that is imposed onto the American people, the, the Native Americans and also the Mexicans that were here before any Anglo settler ever stepped in this country. So we're dealing with that, that confusion, and that uh, dwells in our homes as well. So we take that you know, as a, as a message that it's it's something that we need to trigger we need to fight and we're not going to stop we're going to continue until we get to the point of that and, and it's beautiful to see the young generations being very interested and, and awake our campus with uh, lgbt issues i feel like um, um our uh, pride center we have a pride center on campus they're definitely keeping up with the current political landscape you know uh, when it comes to uh how do you say pronouns you know uh, um, activism for transgender students you know safe spaces they understand the importance of safe spaces so i'd say you know when it comes to the lgbt spectrum which is why you know what i identify as and also as a latino like i feel like you know our campus is doing very well in that aspect How yeah do you feel? i feel like there have been groups like students for quality education um, other groups that just have been forming i know for me personally like i work for a newspaper so like we've been trying to redefine and renegotiate like what it is for news like and actually going out into the community and seeing like what are the issues like are there services or resources for that like following stories of like homelessness and like getting those narratives out there not speaking about them but letting those speak for themselves like providing some sort of platform so they can say hey like i'm here like i exist like this is kind of my experience so i feel like in that sense we're also redefining that too bringing those issues to life when I started this uh, comm class that I have with my students, I asked uh, the chair of our department if I could teach it, but I never told them exactly what I was going to teach. I just told them that it was an emergency course to help channel the negative energies into something positive and productive. And so the very fact, the mere fact that they didn't stand in the way of it, that they, he was like, all right, let's do it. That's pretty crazy because usually that wouldn't happen before. But honestly, like there's all these movements going on with the students and it's beautiful to see that. And But at the same time, uh, there are still issues with the curriculum that we have in our universities. So like there aren't enough classes being taught by faculty of color. Uh, we don't have enough faculty of color. Uh, we also don't have many classes that touch upon the topics that you know are relatable to today's youth, maybe to the youth of the 50s, I don't know, <laughs> like not, not today's youth, you know, and there's many professors that still think that technology is just the makeup, you know, it's kind of like fake extensions or something like that, you know, like they don't see it as like an actual tool to enhance. We, we still debate with those things, you know, and then there's still the issues of people who are inher inherently feeling um, fearful because they see more and more people of color on campus and that creates um, 
uh, they become, you know, s scared. They become fearful and, and thus violent with their language and the way they express and talk to us. And so we do deal with that on a daily basis at our campus. It's not like we have it figured out. <laughs> We're still dealing with a lot of uh, BS when it comes to that, even from our own people. And I would definitely agree with the idea of certain faculty being stuck in some sort of old way of thinking. Because like I feel like I've had to take more control over like the way I'm learning and not necessarily putting all my trust in like the, the people that are supposed to teach me and provide me with like some sort of resources that I can find knowledge with. Like I feel like just stuck essentially. Like I'm not really learning anything unless I'm act actively like taking the opportunities for myself. And even like more so engaging like my peers and like the people I know that are willing to teach me and help me kind of find my way. So that's been interesting navigating that academic setting, especially as a first generation student. I say people are starting to wake up. You know, we have professors like you know, Professor Gallegos. I had a professor in community college uh, at Gomez, you know. We're starting to, you know, wake up and notice, you know, we have these these uh, systems of, of oppression that have existed for years. And uh, I feel like nowadays, I feel like it's more prevalent because people are starting to wake up. Yeah. I feel like for me, what I keep thinking about is like after the screening, speaking to one of the co-directors of the film, she was like, the fight continues pretty much, which is like kind of scary. It's scary in a sense because like, if you don't recognize what you're fighting, like, you'll be stuck, ignorant, like blinded, blindsided too. And then like, you'll end up being more self-destructive to yourself and more so destructive with other people, mm -hmm. like lacking empathy for yourself, for others. So like these issues unfortunately are still relevant, but like for the people that are conscious and like aware of it, like it's our fight to take on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because those are formats of old types of oppression that have changed their clothing, but they're the, they're the same. So the formats remain the same, you just change the game pieces, but the game rules and the game limitations are the same. So what ended up happening back in the day for Native Americans with the Spanish that made them feel inappropriate, then you had Native Americans competing with each other to see who was the whitest, or who had the most money, or who had the most, I don't know, <laughs> you know, whatever. You know, that competition, that that's exactly what they want. They want, the powerful want us to be competing with each other and fighting each other so that they can take the cake while we're fighting with each other. And it's ridiculous. Like, to this day, we still have that. And we have it in, in the most idiotic forms. But we understand also that that's what we're dealing with here. Like, it's bigger than us. It's bigger than anybody in this room. It's something that, you know, we, 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 we cannot fight if we don't understand it. First, we have to understand what's going on. And if we don't acknowledge what's going on, you can't fight it. But then if you deny its existence, you're just agreeing with the brainwash that, that they tell you, no, it's just like people are people. It's like, no, no. So, there's a tendency here and there's a repetitive discourse, repetitive uh, actions. That, and, and, and those things are what keeps us down.